Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Kitchen Impact. So, in I wonder video, what my dear sister Lynette is. Um, basically, gone and investigated more about the uh, about a potential uh, someone who is kind of working huh. against us. According to Malou's info, the synth production base is underwater. Let's go and try to find the entrance. Okay then. Also, it seems like a uh, child's about to be put on trial. So, we also need to prevent that because if he's blamed, we'll basically lose all. Because there's no actual evidence to support him for him to actually be involved. But if he is charged, then we won't. We'll basically lose all, all of our uh, assistance. Like, nobody will. The guards won't help. Finally us. found it! Huh. So this is the entrance that leads to the synth production base. It sure doesn't seem out of the ordinary at all. Wow, I think this is the very first time I've ever heard her talk underwater. That is really weird to hear a voice like that. Sorry. Well, sorry. Well, they don't want it, want it to stand out. <sighs> You're right. An important place like this is bound to have a ton of protective measures and mechanisms. Navi is probably arguing up a storm right now to stall for us. It would appear that I must repeat my question again, Mr. Tartaglia. Do you accept the charge that you are the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case? To be perfectly honest, I don't understand your country's complicated court system, or the reason why I'm being charged with something I've never even heard of. However, I did hear that people who have been charged can choose to participate in a duel to clear their name. Is that right? In which case, as long as I accept the charge, I can have an all-out fight with that champion duelist, Clorend, right? I've got to admit, that's one of the most enticing offers I've ever received. When I privately sparred with her last time, she was obviously holding back. Real disappointing. Hey! Don't you understand? You're currently the prime suspect for a major case. This isn't the place for you to be looking for fights. Oh? Sounds like the Hydro Archon wants to lecture me on the ways of the Opera House. Then why don't you duel me too? I'm the kind of student that learns best in the heat of battle. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. That's not what I meant. Alas, it would appear that communication with the defendant is going poorly. And we have made very little progress. In that case, let me explain everything from the very beginning again. The goal of this trial is to determine the culprit behind the serial disappearances case. <laughs> that case had nothing to do with him! You've got the wrong man! Huh? What's going on? <sighs> Why is she interjecting again? <laughs> I told you it couldn't be one of the Fatui Harbingers. Miss Navia, this is the second time you've interrupted the court proceedings. I only tolerated your behavior last time because you were able to provide the court with a key eyewitness. But that was an exception rather than standard court protocol. I can very well charge you with contempt of court for your interjections. Oh, please. Did you ever think I had any respect for this place's pointless theatrics? We can put that discussion aside for now. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm here to charge the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case. And if my charges prove true, then Tartaglia here will be proven innocent by default, correct? Oh, a young lady has charged in and offered to clear my name. How fascinating. Well, I'd gotten half bored to death by all these rules and procedures anyway. So I'll take you up on that offer. So, Your Honor, is there nothing else for me to do now? You may take a seat for now in the audience, but that doesn't mean the suspicions against you have been lifted. 
Now then, Miss Navia, who is the person you would like to charge instead? That person is... Yep. Marcel, the head of Confrérie of Cabriere! Huh? What Confrérie? Never heard of them in my life. I've heard of them, but weren't they Spina di Rosula's sister organization? Oh, is this going to be a friends to enemies type situation? Please let me remind you, Miss Navia, that charging someone is an incredibly serious matter. Committing to the charge also means taking on the legal responsibilities associated with it. And if the charge fails, depending on the circumstances, you may also be charged with the crime of making a false accusation. Knowing this, do you still wish to charge this man? Yes, I do. In that case, I declare the charge to be valid. Miss Navia and attorneys, please take your places on the court. Members of the guards, please contact Mr. Marcel right away so that he may stand trial. Oh, this is getting real good. Mr. Marcel, you will not require an attorney, is that correct? Ah, apologies, sir. It all just happens so quickly. I still haven't figured out what's going on. I think an attorney won't be necessary. This is probably just a misunderstanding between me and Navia. Very well. In that case, since both sides have now arrived, Miss Navia, please present your charges. I would like to take everyone back to three years ago, to the case of Callus the Unfaithful. Only through elucidating what really happened in that case can we connect all the dots for the serial disappearances case. Navia, do you really think that I was the one who killed your father? Come on, why would I do that? Callus was my benefactor, and remember both you and I only ran to the scene when we heard the sound of a gun. If that's enough to make me a suspect, wouldn't that make everyone at that banquet a suspect as well? I... Uh, I think there's no point in getting into the specifics right now. The audience doesn't even have the big picture yet. Even I'm... <clears throat> struggling to remember some details of that case. Exactly correct, Your Honor. I must refresh everyone's memory about that case before I can explain my charge and reasoning. I see. In which case, I will recount the findings about that case as originally recorded by Maison Guardianage. On the day of the murder, Spina di Rosula hosted a large banquet in a countryside estate owned by the Confrerie of Cabriere. During the banquet, all attending guests heard two gunshots from the courtyard. When the guests arrived at the scene, they found the primary suspect, Callus, holding a gun, while his acquaintance, Jacques, lay dead from a gunshot wound. The guards' investigation did not recover any other firearms from the scene. As a result, they concluded that the suspect's first shot must have missed, while the second must have taken Jacques' life. The suspect did not dispute this conclusion, and also declined to defend himself in court. Instead, he chose to prove his innocence through a duel. Callus was defeated by champion duelist Clarand in the ensuing duel, and soon succumbed to the injuries. These are the known facts about the case. It's these last two. It's gotta be. <sighs> the one with the motive to kill was Jacques, not my father. And even so, Jacques still had no reason to pull the trigger. Uh, in truth, the third person shot Jacques first, and was shot in turn by my father when my father seized the gun from him. After that, the true culprit turned the third person into water, erasing all traces of him from the scene. <clears throat> Thank you for the summary, Your Honor. Of course, the guard's conclusion appeared quite sensible to us at the time. However, we should revisit the case now that we've gained new information about the abilities of water from the Primordial Sea. <sighs> Something's not right. <sighs> Let me think for a little while longer. This assassin Sorry. first shot Jacques, then turned to shoot Callus, only for Callus to wrestle the gun from him and kill him instead. <sighs> Upon
pile of clothing was found at the scene. The guards once believed they were used by Jacques as a costume to disguise himself. But since it was raining that day, the culprit was confident that they could use the rain to wash away all traces of their dissolved accomplice. Whoops. <sighs> Actually, wait, I feel like if it's this... The one. <sighs> nope. Okay, this one does seem right, and so does this one. Uh, so I feel like it's gotta be this one. Uh, it's one of these two, then. Okay, maybe it's... Nope, then I guess... Okay, it's one of these two. Yeah, I'm just... Okay, then it's this. The testimony of the victim's family confirms that Jacques had thoughts of assassinating Callus when he set out for the banquet. Unfortunately for Jacques, the true culprit had already Sorry. considered this possibility and had sent out another assassin. Realizing this, the true culprit caused the hired assassin to dissolve into water, leading everyone to believe Callus was responsible for Jacques' murder. This is the true version of events. What happened? Wait, you're telling me something as dangerous as water from the Primordial Sea has been used for all these years? What a great theory. It also explains Callus's and Jacques' respective motives. I guess they didn't shoot each other after all. Mr. Marcel, you are the one being charged with the crime. You should provide a rebuttal if you wish to prove your innocence. Ah, but I think I agree with everything Navi just said. In fact, there was nothing in her speech that directly implicated me. Uh, then, may I ask some questions? In my opinion, we primarily need to determine two things. One, do you have the evidence to back up your claims? <sighs> I'm afraid not. At least not at this very moment. Boo! <laughs> if you don't have any evidence, you should just go home! I may not have the evidence with me, but I know where I could go to collect it. If we look up the deserted clothes against a record of people who went missing around the same time, we should be able to find a match. Considering the serial disappearances case, the guards probably kept careful records of all missing persons from around that time, regardless of age or gender. That makes sense to me. Monsieur Nivellette, I would consider this to be a reasonable investigative direction. Huh. Why do I feel like Farina's acting a little differently today? Maybe she's scared of embarrassing herself again? Alternatively, she's become more diligent after charging an innocent citizen in the last trial. My second question has to do with the ensuing duel. If the truth is indeed as you described, then why didn't Mr. Callus explain himself in court? If he had testified that a person had been dissolved, he could have at least mounted a defense. I thought about this too, and the answer is actually pretty simple. He felt there were things that were more important to him. The dissolving power of water from the Primordial Sea is an important secret for the true culprit of the serial disappearances case. My father could have exposed it for all to see, but he chose to take it to the grave. At that time, Spina di Rosula was in dire straits, and his reputation had already been shattered. He had no guarantee that going forward with the truth would allow the culprit to be brought to justice. What was certain, however, was that it would paint a gigantic target on my back. Boss once told me that Demoiselle had already been selected as the next target of the serial disappearances case. What? If the secret had gotten out, the culprit would have fought an all-out war with Espina right there and then. I wouldn't have been the only one in danger. All of us would have stood to lose our lives. Of course, the guards might eventually figure out the truth of the matter and determine that we were in the right. But what good would that do? How can a hollow verdict protect anyone? 
Had this opera house ever given my father any kind of confidence in its brand of justice, Spina di Rosula would have had no reason to exist. But by staying silent, we retain the ability to deter our opponents and continue the stalemate. I was able to become Spina di Rosula's president, which made me harder to target, as well as giving me more time to grow and learn. And once I have figured out the truth and stepped up to the challenge, I will do what this opera house cannot, and restore my father's truth and honor back to him. So, you mean to say... Your father intended to die in the duelist's ring? That's right. Do you have any proof? Of course. All you need is to ask his opponent, Clorand. Uh. I don't need your apology, your guilt, or your support from the shadows. You don't have to do anything for my sake. But since he entrusted his will to you, Clorand, you should tell us the truth about his sacrifice. Um, so, during the duel, did you believe that Callus was intending to die? Yes, I did. As a champion duelist, I've fought many battles and taken a countless number of dishonored lives. In my line of work, I've seen all kinds of people give their all for the faintest hope to continue living. Some were determined, others passionate, and some even manic and twisted. Just one look and I can tell if a duelist is hoping to live or if they're looking to die. I hereby swear on my name and honor as a champion duelist that Mr. Callus never intended to leave the ring alive. <sighs> Since that's your testimony, I have no more questions. It appears there really are good grounds to reopen this case. I concur. However, Miss Navia, you still have not explained the link between your father's case and the serial disappearances case. Right? What she said was fascinating, but kind of beside the point. Wait, weren't they just talking about the serial disappearances case? Of course, Your Honor. The two cases are connected via a matter of timing. In my father's case, the culprit intended to kill both Jacques and Callus. As a result, they planned to act after hearing two gunshots. And, at the end of Linny's trial, the culprit also only dissolved the victim in front of everyone because they realized they were at risk of being identified. The culprit could only time their actions so precisely if they were already at the scene. Coincidentally, Marcel attended both the banquet and the trial. So that's why you suspected me. <sighs> Even after hearing your reasoning, I still can't help but find it a little preposterous. I'm used to it, though. You've always been an impulsive and sentimental child, Navia. It's one of your most endearing traits. No need to appeal to pathos. I won't try to refute your points one by one, but even if everything you just said was true, can you prove that I was the only person present at both events? On top of that, does a person have to be physically present to control the timing? Can't someone remotely monitor the place? Uh... I don't know what she can say to that. I know that even with that, you might still think you can reduce the list of suspects with some further investigations, until I'm the only one left on the list. Alas, who won't feel at least a little hurt by an accusation of murder from a girl you see as your own daughter? But if I were to dismiss this completely, you'd also think I'm not being considerate of your feelings. Ah well, let Uncle Marcel teach you another lesson. Do you know what the biggest flaw in your reasoning is? I suppose you're gonna tell me anyways. It's timing again. I'm a businessman by trade. From that standpoint, there's no reason for me to kidnap young women. It's a high-risk action with nothing to gain. In addition, I left my home in Snezhnaya when I was young to come to Poisson of and work in some trade. My business only thrived when I received Callus's patronage. But the disappearances began before I ever stepped foot in Fontaine. Uh, I do apologize, Demoiselle. This was my mistake. No. It's not your fault. I'm sure he had come prepared. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Would you like to check the date of my first business license against the first known case of the serial disappearances? You can also take a look at my border entry records, or ask my friends and family when I left Snezhnaya for the first time. Could those records and testimonies do something to appease the unspeakable anguish in your heart? Oh, seems like she got the wrong guy. 
At this rate, Navia will be convicted for falsely accusing him. I think you've done a superb job of dissecting your father's feelings as he neared the end of his life. But aren't you going against all of his wishes and expectations right now? He wished for you to become more rational, collected, and conscientious, instead of dwelling only on your own feelings. Once you've learned to be more considerate of others' feelings, and to stop rushing headlong into things, you'd have met most of his expectations. This isn't just about me, and it never has been. The biggest difference between me and the rest of the victims is that I still have the ability to search for the truth. While that same agency has long been taken from then, the people whose families were destroyed by synth abuse, the people who lost their loved ones to the serial disappearances, and the people who suffered tragic ends due to their sense of justice. Many people's images are flashing before my eyes. I'm sure some are coming to those of you in the audience as well. And whose image do you see, Marcel? Is it a man named Vache? <laughs> oh, so you do know that name. I'm merely surprised you'd suddenly say the name of someone I've never even heard of. I was waiting for you to say that. A little while earlier at the entrance of the at the synth product base. Yep, so this is back to me. At least it should be. Oh, I get it. This allows me to change my team. Yep. Okay, let's deal with these guys. Our bond is strong! And voila! Out of my way! No, my sword! Now we can uh, now we can get up. The there. water level is rising! Now we can swim to the top! But this is still a ways away from where we need to go. Rain 
outlines your fa- <laughs> Step right up! or Lynette since they're both from Fontaine I can easily do uh kind of like a now the path is water. clear let's go okay that was a little farther than I was intending but okay is there anything over here it's not Not mistaken. Huh, that's right. Then let's hurry up and find some evidence so we can get back to the opera house and help Navia. What's all this? Huh, oh, it's a bunch of really cute things. Pink accessories, a hair tie, a necklace, even a makeup box. There's a name too. Oh. Paimon sees it too, but why are all these cute things labeled with different girls' names? They probably belong to the victims. Huh? You mean the girls from the serial disappearances? They were brought here? And then they were turned into water. And all the boxes of things. These names. That means... Oh, this is terrible. Wait, so were they turned into... Were they turned into the stuff? Like, after they went <gasps> into the water, were they turned... What's this over here? Looks like some kind of place for research. Experiment number 16 aims to verify Jacob Ingold's research conclusions on the Primordial Sea, and use his theory as a foundation to achieve a breakthrough. The experiment was a failure. No individual managed to resurface from the water from the Primordial Sea. Female specimens 22, 23, 
and 24 were dissolved. <laughs> Calm down, Paimon. Sorry, Traveler. Paimon will try her best. It's just that Paimon's never read something so scary before. How can someone write something that terrible in such a matter-of-fact tone? You read the rest. Paimon's too scared to keep going. The goal of the researcher... So that's why he did all of these experiments. But did he really think he'd be able to find a way just by dissolving people over and over? That's just insane! There's a name here. Huh? Isn't that the name you heard by the fountain? Paimon thought... He was an eyewitness in the serial disappearances case. No. He's a researcher? <sighs> you mean Vache is the one who did all of these... Uh, experiments? The voice I heard from the fountain was probably... Then... Th th so that's it! Vache was no victim, but personally took his lover and... No, that's not it either! If that's the case, why would he want people to resurface from the water? There must be more to this than meets the eye. In any case, Paimon will write it all down. <laughs> Whoa! There's so much synth here! And so many bottles of ingredients that probably just contain the waters of the primordial sea. There's so many. Hmm. Mixing in progress, ready to drink, stock sample? Huh. They've also got all the synth pretty clearly labeled. Whoa, there's even fruit flavored synth? Well, that definitely proves that this is where the, where the pro, where they produce synth. Yep, it's super obvious. written here. Nothing escapes Detective Paimon's eyes. Hmm. Callus. Navia's father. Oh, this seems to be an investigation report on him. It's probably related, related to his, his and Chuck's case. Hmm. Hmm. Yep. It's about finding someone to assassinate Jacques and Callus because of a lack of confidence that Jacques himself would go through with it. This should prove the existence of the third person, right? Is there anything else? Hmm... We still have not determined the exact content of the key information Callus has passed on to certain members of his organization. The old dog's a real menace to deal with. Even if he abides by the promise he's made to us, he will still have the upper hand. He can act whenever he wants to make our lives miserable. The only option left is to remove him from the picture entirely. I concur. Let's send someone to kill him. He won't declare war as long as we don't touch Navia. Oh, seems like we've got a bunch of correspondence between the higher-ups. They plan this well in advance. Uh, they're all just so evil. Is this not enough evidence? I feel like it should be. Oh, look! There's an important looking basin over here! And it's full of water! It's supposed to be water from the primordial sea. That means this is where they make all the synth! And that special water is the main ingredient! If you dilute it with normal water, you'll get synth, but the pure stuff can dissolve a human! Paima will take notes on this incriminating evidence! We've looked at almost everything here, and it seems like our theories were spot on! But... Who really is this Vacher? Yeah! We haven't found anything that reveals his true identity! No wonder even Nervalette wasn't able to find anything! Whoever it is probably destroyed everything to do with that name a long time ago. That way, even if we bring all this back to the opera, we won't be able to identify the true culprit. But maybe it's not... Maybe maybe it's not close enough 
Let's look again. Sure thing. Paimon won't admit defeat to this guy either. I could do that. Okay, I've looked at both of these. <sighs> oh, do I have to go through and look at everything again? You take that side, and Paimon will take this side. Check everything carefully. We'll find something for sure. After some time. Ugh. Nothing at all. And Paimon can't even find snacks either. Paimon, I found it. Oh, really? Let Paimon see. Vinier. Isn't that Vashe's lover's name? Then you found her diary. Let's see. Aww. It's just a normal diary chronicling their love story. She was so sweet, too. Oh, Paimon feels even worse for her now. She made a list of baby names. So many! A whole page is worth! But they're all crossed out. Was she unhappy with all of them? The final name she decided on was... Marcel. Wait, but... Marcel's pretty old. Oh, has this case been going on for so long that he's Fache and Vinier's grown son? Let's go, Paimon. Uh, hey! Paimon still hasn't figured it out yet. Okay, so I'm assuming he started the soul, and maybe like, and then maybe he also had a kid, or maybe the kid didn't actually exist, and the share wasn't actually his, like the share wasn't actually his name. And whose image name, do you see, Marcel? Is right, it a I'm man named Vache? Huh. <sighs> oh, so you do know that name? <laughs> I'm merely surprised you'd suddenly say the name of someone I've never even heard of. I was waiting for you to say that. Navia! We're back! Ugh, as expected of my partner. I just knew you'd return in the nick of time. Just how often do you intend to flout the rules of this court? It's all right, Monsieur Nervalet. Given their confidence, I expect they've found the crucial evidence. You say that you never heard of the share. The share. <laughs> But the truth of it, Marcel, is that you've always been Vache. Huh? We've investigated your lair and we already know everything! After your lover, Vinier, was dissolved, you kept abducting young women to experiment on the hopes of bringing her back to you! You even created Marcel as a new identity and destroyed all records of your past as Vache! So that's it. Even the villains in opera performances rarely go that far. And with that, Marcel's motive has now been established. This information regarding your past also dismantles your prior timing defense. Well, Marcel, do you know where you went wrong? <sighs> you fixated your gaze on the lover that passed away, instead of paying attention to the living people around you. 
So, you never noticed how we changed, or how we grew as individuals. You also never understood Boss's real expectations for his daughter. Or our determination to see things through. Your determination? <laughs> Mr. Marcel, please speak up now if you would like to defend yourself. Otherwise, the trial will move on to the next stage. Do you think... Do you really think I wanted to do any of this? Pay attention to you? <laughs> what for? Have you ever paid attention to me? Ever empathized with my pain? Ever known how it feels to watch the love of your life dissolve right in front of your eyes? No one helped me. No one even believed me. All those decades ago, even the officers from the Maison Guardianage were laughing at me. They said there's no way a human being can turn into water. So I must have gone mad from grief. Vinyar's death was brushed away by all of you as if it didn't matter at all. Well, now you know, don't you? Ha! Well, it's too late now. All those who were dissolved are gone forever. You only have yourselves to blame. You set up this ornate opera house in pursuit of your so-called justice. Your beloved drama, while turning a blind eye to the suffering of the people. Vinyar is dead. We promised each other that we would always be together. Wherever she goes, I will follow. But I'm not from this blasted place, so I can't be dissolved, no matter what I do. I can't dissolve! Can't dissolve! Can't dissolve! <laughs> Do you all see? I can't go! I can't follow! So if I can't go where she is, what choice do I have but to try to bring her back? I did all of that, and in the end, that accursed callus still got the better of me. I spent my entire life living on pins and needles, only to get stabbed by his idiot daughter at the very end. <laughs> the suspect is exhibiting signs of mental distress. Guards, please restrain him. Don't touch me. Don't anybody come near me. I still need to save him. Yeah, I promise. We made a promise. Vinier, Vinier, please, Vinier, don't think badly of me. All I want to do is fulfill our promise. At this point, the verdict of this trial is clear. With Mr. Marcel's conviction, the charges against Mr. Tartaglia no longer have any basis. Fine by me. I was in a bad mood, but after a show like that, I'm actually feeling pretty good. Traveler. Please submit all the evidence you have collected to the guards, so that I might review and summarize the truth behind the serial disappearances case. The man now known as Marcel was originally named Vache, and worked as an adventurer with his partner and lover, Vignier. During an underwater expedition, Vignier accidentally came into contact with water from the Primordial Sea, and was dissolved in front of Vache as a result. Vache learned of the primordial water's existence through the work of others and began to kidnap young women for research, with the goal of discovering a method to restore Vignier back to life. To cover his tracks, he invented the new alias of Marcel and began to operate a business in Poisson. During the course of his research, Vache discovered that a diluted concoction of water from the primordial sea can induce feelings of euphoria and began to manufacture and market synth. However, as he accumulated wealth to fund his continued research and expanded the scope, he came into conflict with Spina di Rasula. After exchanging blows with Spina di Rasula for many years, Vache decided to assassinate their president, Callus, at a banquet. Although the assassination did not go as Vache expected, he was able to turn Callus into the murder suspect by dissolving the assassin he sent to the scene. And just recently, Vache attempted to frame Linny as the culprit of the serial disappearances case, using a similar method. However, his attempt to frame Linny failed, 
and the power of water from the primordial sea became public knowledge. This case also exposed enough of Ashe's machinations that he was eventually successfully charged in court. Enigmatic history of the serial disappearances case, with the truth revealed to all. The Oratrice will now deliver the final verdict regarding the charges against Mr. Vache. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Mr. Vache is guilty. Vachet away. Good. It's what he deserves. Uh, with that, the serial disappearances case is over now. We really just witnessed history. Who would have thought the true culprit would be such a polite and well-spoken guy? Yippee! We helped Navia bring the bad guy to justice! He's hurt so many innocent people and now he's finally getting what he deserves! Huh? Are you okay? Navia? <sighs> Demoiselle, you were absolutely brilliant. The day our late boss had always hoped for has finally come. You can rest easy now, knowing justice has been served. Yeah. Yeah. It's finally over. It's all thanks to you guys. And my partner. <sighs> See, Papa? Spina di Rosula still doing well with me at the helm. Well now, hasn't this been a most delicious piece of drama? The villain has been caught, justice has been served, past wrongs have been righted, and it's a big ol' happy ending. Since it's been such a great show, I'll just let the false accusations against me slide. Either way, I've still got some business to attend to, so if you'll excuse me... Please wait just one moment, Mr. Tartaglia. Ugh, uh, what? Now? None of this has anything to do with me. According to court protocol, since this trial was initiated due to a charge against you, a verdict must also be made regarding the initial charge before the trial can conclude. Oh, come on. Is this really necessary? Haven't you already caught the real criminal? Isn't it time for side characters like me to exit stage left? Please respect the laws of Fontaine. This has always been the rule. All right, all right, but this sure is a lot of hassle. All I need to do is stand over there, right? Let's just get this over with. Through evidence presented in the public trial that was just held, it has been established that Mr. Tartaglia has no direct connection to the serial disappearances case. The guilty party has been identified, and thus, it is logical to suppose Mr. Tartaglia is innocent of the charges. We now turn to the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal to render the final verdict on the charges. Hmm... According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Mr. Tartaglia is... Guilty? Guilty. Yep. What?! Hey, hey! That's not funny! Didn't you just say I'm supposed to be innocent? What's with this verdict? Is your justice machine malfunctioning? Huh? This has never happened before. The Oratrice actually returned a different verdict from the Chief Justice. I mean, have you ever heard of an innocent Fatui Har Sorry, Harbinger? Sorry, what's happening. Do you think the or Oratrice might have just convicted him on... On general principle? But weren't the charges about the serial disappearances case? No matter what else he's guilty of, it shouldn't affect the verdict in this case, right? Just what's going on here? The judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal is, by law, the final verdict of the court. We must accept the guilty verdict. Guards, please take the suspect into custody per court protocol.
So this is how justice is done in Fontaine. What a joke. <laughs> You've got your rules. Well, I've got mine too! I am sorry. If you have been wronged, we will find the truth. But the rules of the court must be upheld. Apologies. This is also the first time I've encountered such a situation. However, according to the rules established at the conception of Fontaine's court system, the Oratrice's judgment is the final verdict of the court. All I do is follow court procedure. As for why the Oratrice arrived at the conclusion it did, you should probably ask someone more knowledgeable than me. Then we have no choice but, but to ask the Archon herself. Uh, why are you looking at me? I had nothing to do with it! I... I don't know what happened there either! Hey, stop staring at me! What does Lady Farina mean by that? She says she has no idea either? But that's impossible! Didn't she create the Oratrice herself? Yeah, no, so I are the verdicts reliable or not? Can results Hydrocon. like this really be called justice? <sighs> My dearest citizens, did you really think we'd allow an incorrect verdict to be handed out in this court? Did you really believe that the judgment could be mistaken or be the result of some sort of random mishap? Don't tell me. You thought even I had been blindsided by the Oratrice's result. But the way she looked just now, it was pretty obvious she had no idea what was going on. However, given the state of things, I shall give you an explanation. Everything that just took place, including my supposed shock and bafflement, was a part of an elaborate performance, with every action meant to stir up drama and excitement. And, <laughs> of course, for every performance there is a script. Everything has unfolded exactly as I expected from the very beginning. As the embodiment of the very concept of justice, the Oratrice shall never render an arbitrary judgment! If you thought Child had nothing to do with the serial disappearances case, it is only because you've been blinded by the superficial appearance of innocence. Everything he's done, not to mention the danger he poses, are beyond ordinary comprehension and completely unforgivable! All shall be revealed in time. You will come to understand my noble intentions, as well as the absolute correctness of the Oratrice's verdict. <laughs> now, having said that, although I hate to leave things hanging in suspense, it is now time for this performance to end. As the lead actress, I shall be the first to take my leave. Toodaloo! So she chose to make her escape after all, did she? Uh, so you're saying we shouldn't put much stock into what she just said? Hmm. She probably just put on that performance to save face. As for the truth, it's unlikely that she actually has any idea. Would have pulled the rug out from under her ass. However, please be assured that I will continue to investigate this case in a personal capacity. Just as I promised, if the judgment has been incorrect, 
We will do our utmost to clear his name. All right. Even though we feel pretty badly for him, we'll take your word for it for now. After all, he's done plenty of bad stuff. So he should have known he'd go to prison someday, right? Well, with that, this is probably probably gonna leave this area and then enter and then that's the ending the next part's probably gonna be super short, but being as how long this part is, I gotta end it here. So I'd like to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you've all enjoyed it. I hope you like and subscribe and have a great day.